Hey, welcome to Prong's Porch Homestead. Well, you're about to see bits and pieces and clips and uh, just uh, about an experience we had today for the first time. We harvested our honey. Uh, it's it was it it was really great. So. Since it was just David and I and the beekeeper, <laughs> there was a lot of changing hands. But uh, all in all, I just want to say that it was a really good experience. The honey that we did get was light and sweet. Um, and I'm sharing that with you because it was just, it was an amazing day. And uh, enjoy the clip. <laughs> hey guys, we are harvesting honey today at the Bronze Porch Homestead. It is our first time and we have David here, Nick here, he's our beekeeper, myself and Aisha. So, it's also very noisy. It is an urban harvest. Let's go up. <laughs> Not little anymore. Oh, a lot of sticky stuff on there. They really like their hive to be nice and secure. You can take that. Just put it anywhere. Um, yeah, you can just lean it up against the wall or the other side. At this point, you're good with not having the smoker? Uh, we should be good without the smoker. So you can actually see the honey up on the yeah, top Yeah, they put there. in, get a lot in here. Wow. All right, so what we're gonna do, that's the best way. You got that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna do a little shuffle with the frames here. Okay. Just gonna shuffle some frames. Okay. I'll, I'll take it half. Okay. So at this point, you're re trying to remove one frame starting from the outer edge. Right. Okay. This is probably going to be the messier one because sometimes they, they connect to the wall. Right? Yeah. is a beautiful capped frame. Full. Wow, tripping. That is full. Wow. Something tells me we should have done this last week. <laughs> well, it probably would have still been full last week. Like this. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Fully capped. Wow. Look at that. I really didn't expect all this honey this year. At least from what I've been, you know, been looking at and... Yeah, it's not always, you don't always get a huge harvest the first year, but you guys are going to get easily get about 60 pounds. Look at that. Uh, Every single one is capped. And they're beautiful frames. They, they're really very capped very nicely. Seems like every one of them is full. full. So you know, other experiences that we have seen that others have uh, documented, they're not as nicely full like these. Yeah. These guys uh, uh, probably have or? a lot of flowers uh, nearby that they've been going to. Well, you, you probably have a lot more forage here in the Bronx. So that's one thing. Yeah. We had really nice weather. We haven't had any crazy uh, uh, droughts or, or torrential rains or something. Huh? Right. I'm not even time lapsing it. I'm I'm yeah, doing yeah. real time. You can always slow it down later. Oh, that is amazing. This is worth every. This is worth a whole agreement. Okay, this is gonna be our box. Uh -huh. Okay. That's our box. Okay. Can I stop bringing them over? So what we're gonna do? Wait, let him take. Let's. Yeah. We're gonna. We're gonna. It's best if we can do kind of an assembly line. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'll dust them. Um, and if you could put them in, or if you and, and I'll cap them, and, and I'll put. Once, once you see me do a couple of these, then jump in, and we'll start just. Okay. Get okay. them all in that box over there. Here, do you want me to? Hold so, okay, that's the first one. Okay. The first one. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah. I'm doing it this way. Yep, put it right in the first slot. And then take the lid and put it right on top. That's one box. One box, yeah. One box. <laughs> How much do you think that box weighs? Uh, the box of everything probably weighs about 50 or 55 pounds. Wow. I was going to say 60 pounds, yeah. like the at honey least. Itself, it's probably between 30 and 40 pounds of honey. And then the other one. So, here's uh, the equipment we have, the equipment that we have. Um, we're going to harvest today. Uh, and actually, I do need to take the extractor with me because it's, it's, I, I need it for another event tomorrow. So, I'm here until we get done. Um, so we'll, we'll get you all set up. But, uh, we're going to extract, and then uh, once the boxes are empty, we're going to come back out and come back here, um, and let them start filling them again. Uh, uh, we're going to be able to get... No, we're, we're done. Okay, at this time we are done with the extracting of the uh, frames out of the hives over there, one each. We did not film the other one because it's the same thing. And Nick just um, took the one box and now we're going to bring it inside. I'm wearing boots for this because there were bees everywhere. I don't want to get stung around my ankles. So on the table, we now have a plastic covering. 
because it will get messy. And I just took it. This is really a shower curtain, guys. This is a shower curtain, so that's what this is. We put that on the table here. So for this time, we're borrowing all of Nick's equipment. And there's the extractor over there, which looks huge. There's your bucket, and it has the the honey gate right here which is very cool these are the that's the knife that we saw in one of the videos yeah. right with the beveled blade See, I'm gonna leave the look like water for a second okay we got a lot of buckets in front of us uh, you want me to get some damp paper towels or something no I just uh, these were all clean this morning I just want to make sure any little bits Art. Oh, this one has holes on the bottom instead yep. of a sifter. Okay. That's an experience beekeeper. Yeah. Some of the ones we've seen are with a mesh or a sifter, but this one's you know what? It's too hot to hold on to this. All okay. right. Um, so just like outside, I'll do the first one and then let you yeah, and then maybe run. I, have yeah. fun with the rest. Yeah. Okay. While you're, while you're doing it, and then I'll get the extractor in here and we'll, um, we'll get okay. that going. So we're picking it up. So this one, we have a couple of our bee friends who are hiding, uh, hanging out in here. Um, we will give them a little bit more time to get out. Okay. We'll grow to the next frame there. Let's see. Thick enough that you're going to be able to just run the knife down and get most of the trappings. Uh -huh. This one's a thinner one, and you can see, you might be able to see how the cappings don't quite come up to the level of the yes. wood. Uh -huh. So we're going to have to use our scraper uh, in a minute. Uh, but this, this is the scraper. Sometimes it's called a honey scraper or a honey fork, um, but this is important for those low spots. But let's see. Um, to get the cappings off, uh, we're just going to cut across and let the knife do the work. So I'm not going to try to press through it, but I want to cut parallel to the wood and just go all the way down. Well, if, you, if you have too steep of an angle, this knife is sharp enough, it'll actually give you a little wood shavings going down. Mm. Um, turn it over. I think we're only going to get along that bottom edge there. But the key to this, if you just try to press and go through it, it's so hard and you're going to get so tired. You have to do it like back and forth. You really saw and let uh -huh. kind of the weight of the uh -huh. of the knife take you down let the okay. tool do the work okay. exactly that's what we always say with our um, other ones so now for all the low spots here and this has a lot of low spots um, I like to go along the edge make sure I get those broken and I'm just dragging across the top so I'm not digging all the way down into the uh -huh. into the bottom and then because when we put this in all of the uh, Shavings. Uh, everything is going to be getting flung to the outside. And actually, it doesn't, because of the extractor I have, it doesn't really matter this way. There's a different kind of extractor called a radial extractor where 
it's important to do these horizontal as opposed to vertical because you'll leave a lot of honey uh, in the comb. Right. Or it'll take a lot longer for it to spin back out. We're just gonna scrape across. Uh, sometimes some people in videos will actually use this to uh, get under the cappings mm -hmm. and pull them up. We like saw that. that, yeah. That's You can do it that way and it does keep the comb you, you don't damage much of the comb, but it takes forever. Mm. Uh, for me, I'm just scrape across the top. I probably damage a little bit more of the comb than the other technique, mm -hmm. but it's quicker and you can just move on. Well, the other guy who, who did it the way that you mentioned, he looked like he had a lot of time on his hands. Yeah. <laughs> In an urban mm -hmm. environment, there's no time for anything. <laughs> for, so. Right, we gotta move on to the next We step, gotta move so. on to the next. Yeah. I'll just go through this whole thing. He he was using like the, the spatula. I know, but he was taking his time doing it because he had all the so, time in the world. Yeah, but uh, doing this, you, you're getting a lot of shavings from the wax. Right, and we, we're gonna be, on the thicker uh, combs, we're gonna have a lot of wax uh -huh. and honey that comes off. This is gonna catch all the honey that we're cutting off now, mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna, we have this extractor and we wanna maintain the comb so that's why we're doing it this way. Mm -hmm. If we didn't care about maintaining the comb and we just wanted the bees to rebuild, mm -hmm. <clears throat> then the uh, do, using a spatula mm -hmm. in there is the quickest way to do it. You let all the honey sit in a sieve or a, a, some sort of strainer like this mm -hmm. and all the honey will come out and uh, then you'll have a, just a bunch, all the wax left over. Okay, but in this case we're leaving the the frame in there and then putting it back, right? Right. Okay. So we're going to we're going to maintain the comb. We're going to okay. have empty combs when we're done here. Okay. And since we got Now this box you created or you bought it? I made this. This okay. is uh something that's just these are actually some busser bins that you can get from the restaurant supply. Okay, great. Store. Okay, perfect um, size for the this, I noticed perfect, for the frame. It is it was perfect size for that. They have them that already come with these holes in the bottom, so okay. that was perfect. And then they also it also had a little hole in the side already for, for So you already did that. So you didn't have to drill the all thing, these perfectly. No. <laughs> the, really the only thing I had to manufacture out of this whole thing was I had to cut this was piece this? of wood yeah. and put two holes and then drill a screw through the bottom okay. okay am i ready to do this one this is you okay how does it feel feels sticky mm -hmm. go back and forth like he said those little patches that didn't get uh, uncapped don't worry about those you can get those with the with the scratcher and, uh, but, uh, which ones you made these right the corners or the sides don't worry about them you, the scratcher will make quick oh, work okay. of those okay. all right now the other side uh, well let me do the scratcher over here it takes a little bit of pressure but you'll know if you give it too much pressure, you'll go right through to the foundation, so. I'm surprised you haven't tasted it. I literally <laughs> just tasted it. What do you think? It is so good. Look, it's just dripping. Oh my God, guys. Oh mm, God, it's so good. Sorry, B. Well, 
one of my uh, volunteer colleagues at the pantry today, I was telling him about the honey. He said that in Puerto Rico, what they do is they take the comb and all, they put it in a jar and let the and let it just come out right on, on its own, which takes forever, but they that's also, how they did it. <laughs> they also have the heat down there. They also have the heat, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And they're probably not just cutting it out and putting it in there, probably crushing it up a little bit and letting it all to let it go through, into yeah through a cloth or a cheesecloth or something. Yeah, we saw one guy uh, on YouTube. He had a using, mesh. Using the cloth, cheesecloth. So today we don't have a strainer to run everything through. Um, what I'm going to have you guys do is we're going to get all the honey into a bucket. Mm -hmm. We're going to let it sit overnight, mm -hmm. maybe for two days. Okay. Anything that's not honey will float to the top. Oh, look the honey at that. will be on the bottom, and you'll, you'll spend 10 minutes skimming off okay. any bits of wax or you might see a bee. So 48 uh, hours, no more than 48 hours, 72 hours? Maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You could open, open the bucket and see how it's looking. We have jars. Oh, well then you, there you go. You'll see the honey gate, the red honey gate on that bucket, okay. which is the same, very similar to uh, to the extractor here. Um, that is going to make it real easy to bottle all your honey. How are you doing? Okay, I just don't want to mess up. Oh, it's just oozing out. So just remember to keep it sawing across, and use that use the wood as your guide. So keep the keep your saw close. Uh, oh, on that side. I'm doing it on this side. Yeah, because I could still see how like it's over. You want to keep going all the way down, all to okay. where the wood lever, to where that wood piece is, right? right? There you go. Use so, the use the out out border. Use the border. Yeah. Go yeah, yeah. go there. You go up to the border. Yeah. Oh my goodness! It looks. You haven't tasted it yet. I'm still asking him. <laughs> yeah. So. It has a light flavoring to it, by the way. This is uh, primarily from our linden trees, which is why we get such a yellow. Yeah, it has a light flavoring it. to it. Yep. Okay, and now with the, with this. Yep, any cells that are still closed, when you put it in the extractor, that honey's gonna stay there if you don't break those cappings. Now question for you, for someone who wanted to know what the breakdown of the, of the ingredients were to make this honey, is there, I know you had mentioned something a while ago. So there are labs out there that do a pollen analysis of honey. Um, that will give you an idea of what's out there, but it doesn't, it's not a good, it's not like getting the DNA of the honey. Right, right, like you're right, not, right. You right. know exactly what's yeah. in there because um, there's some plants that the bees primarily get pollen from, they don't get any nectar from it. And vice versa, there's other plants that they only get nectar from and they get very little pollen. Right. So you might see a lot of pollen from plant A in the honey, but plant A, doesn't have it's not a nectar producing plant okay. and so there's not really any of that honey in there even though there might be a lot of that pollen in there okay. uh, but it will tell you what kind of things are growing around here and yeah. it's, it's a pretty neat way to oh, that's good to kind of so it's a lab okay and I think I, I have that yeah link, there's actually. I think there's like a it might be a University of Texas oh. um, I know a lot of them kind of shut down that service during COVID. Yeah. So they. It'll be fun to. I don't know how many of them have reopened. So yeah, this is a low. Okay, frame. you've got another um, twenty more frames to go. That's <laughs> all. Uh, only seventeen. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna have to use the scraper. So the for scraper this. for the whole that whole face. Okay. And that pulling is better, right? Yep. Okay. That, my friends, is an extractor. So this is a two-frame extractor, and we're going to use, um, uh, it's meant to hold deep frames, which is why the carriage in here is so wide. Uh, but we have these pieces of wood 
Oh, to are we ready? We're ready. So that's, I'm gonna hold it here at the top, I got it. Okay. So this is gonna, we're gonna just drop this in, and then this, this piece of wood is gonna keep it from bouncing around right. in there. Oh, okay. And then the trick with this is whatever you do on this side, you do you the same the exact. Opposite? Right. Okay. So everything, if you started over here with the wood on the right and the frame on the left, you'll turn this around and put the wood on the right and the frame on the left. Is the wood idea your idea? Did you put that piece this of is, wood in there? Uh, yes. It, it's, um, it just keeps the frames. You can put these in just by themselves. But they make but noise. But it, keep, it keeps them from knocking around and okay. everything. Um, so this, this is a, a tangential extractor, meaning the frames are tangential to the, to the motion. Okay. Um, they have others that are called radial extractors that are where the frames are like spokes of a wheel. Uh, we saw that, yeah. Um, when, with those extractors, the honey comes out of both sides at the same time. With a tangential extractor, you extract one side of the frame, and then you have to flip the frames around and extract the other. Okay, so how they many do we do at one time? Four? Two. two so can I ask what made you decide to just get the two? I'm curious as a beekeeper yourself. I, so this is one that I purchased from a beekeeper who was getting out of it. Okay. Um, oh, so okay, he, so he had. so the opportunity was there. That's right. pretty much. Would, um, I what, like I like the radial ones because they are you do both sides at the same time. They do tend to be a little bit more expensive, mm -hmm. and you usually have to get one. I think they start at like four frames or six frames. So there are all, the the two frame ones generally are the best uh, form factor as far as being small, and usually the cheaper ones to deal with. Okay. Um, All right. Anyway, we've got them in here. Yeah. Uh, they should be fairly well balanced. There might be more honey. Do we need to put the plastic on the it yeah. on the top? So we have these uh, these lids here. Yeah. That we can set that on, especially if you have uh, multiple people, multiple hands okay. around. Right. Um, I'm gonna leave this off just so I can see down okay. into here. If you want to film. Just a, if you just watch the side, the inside of the barrel, okay. you'll see the honey start to come out. And I'm going to get this going. You see it? Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Look at that, guys. So we just get this up to like a comfortable speed. It doesn't have to be uh, Going crazy. so fast. Yeah. And especially when, the, when you have the frames are a little bit uneven because one might have more, a little more honey honey than the other. Once we get some of that honey out, it becomes much easier to, to go a little faster. It doesn't shake so much. So with this many frames and this process, I could see where the four or five hour extracting comes in. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm glad this was in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. I unscrewed the thing. <laughs> I unscrewed the thing here. Okay, we're rolling now. We got David doing the spinning. We have Nick continuing with the uncapping. Still coming up. Okay, we're still spinning away. We still have, we're still into the first box. <laughs> Started, nobody knows. Round and round she goes. Okay, we get it. How much honey nobody knows. I 
Well, you'll have to excuse the squeakiness, people, but... Well, it's just another sound over all the other sounds that I... that I record. These have to be flipped over to the other side because this extractor only uh, lets out one side at a time. Ooh, look at all the strings. There you go. Here you go. Okay, switching places here now. We can keep doing it and, and get keep a little doing bit. it and get a little bit more. It's the diminishing returns at a certain point, yeah. but all that honey won't go to waste because again the bees will clean it all up and uh, they'll enjoy putting that all back, all back in their um, colony. So we'll uh, another two. Let's before yeah. we do another two. Let's get out some of this honey that's in here. Is it a little too early for that? No. Okay. So we can, okay, uh, so that means we gotta lift it up. We're gonna, yep. That explains Ooh. the handles. Just right there on the edge. And just so we don't get any. Bring it a little. You just tip, oh, okay. tip, tip the thing back. I'll tip this under. Uh, tip it back the other way. Oh, I see. There you go. Okay. Put it down. And so, again, this is going to have bits of wax. This might have a bee or two in it, um, but that's all going to float to the top. Whenever we're putting honey into a, to a container that has a honey gate, it's always good to make sure that the honey gate is nice and closed. Uh, if you start pouring a bunch of honey in and it goes all over your floor, oh, it's not fun. Oh, forget about it. Yeah. You'll be licking it off the floor, don't I've worry. I've done that. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is, let me just lift this back. Oh, look at that! And so we can always tip this. And it's going in there. It's liquid gold. Oh, that's gonna, we can just set it flat. So I have a question without mentioning any other companies or businesses. Um, how do you feel about the uh, modern looking honey hive extractors that I've been seeing? Um, uh, what? So they, so they're, they're high, they're like beehives, but then when the honey is ready to be extracted. They, they have the some. yeah. They have these knobs and yeah. they're how do how do you feel about so, those? So um, overall, there's really only one company that makes those, uh, but overall, uh, I'm a fan of them. Okay. Uh, they don't work exactly like they're advertised, so that's my biggest gripe with them. But uh, otherwise, um, it saves you from having, you know, this type of equipment to deal with. Okay. Um, they're more a little bit more expensive, so it's hard to. You know, if you have two or three or four hives, it really starts adding up. If you just have one or two hives, then it's not so bad. Okay. Um, but once you get it past a certain point, it's it's more affordable to just get this type of equipment. And, and go, right? Yep. Oh, okay, okay. 
So that's good to know because sometimes I see the other other hives I, I and I've wondered the, if, if it's really that as easy as the way they make it sound. You still have to take the bees off the trains like we did out there. Okay. Um, and it's not smart to tap the hive when it's on the hive. You want to take that box inside and release the honey then. Okay. So. okay. Yeah, that part they don't mention. I'm no, he's going to empty it out. Oh, I'm, I'm, out I'm, I'm rushing, I'm rushing, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Wipe your hands. Oh my God. That's 30 pounds right there. <laughs> it should be, actually. Okay, you want to, uh, I'll bend this back a little bit so you can. All done. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Ooh, it's called an ooze. Look at it oozing. Oh, such a beautiful color. <laughs> oh my God. Beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your blessings and for such a great apiculturist over here. Okay, so after all that wonderful process, we filled up an entire five gallon bucket it's a food grade bucket anyway it's a five gallon a, a bucket and then this is what it i have left over i was in the middle of a meeting so had to kind of step aside and let the guys take over but this is going to stay overnight and then um this comes up like that and then whatever is dripping down into this bucket is going to be then put in there and then the rest, I was told that I can freeze it to kill any mites or anything that's in there or any, you know, whatever that shouldn't be there. And then I could use it for anything. So I am going to use it to create other um, salves that I've been making, this, which is, you know, this is perfect. Uh, so, yeah, it was really a very eventful day. Wow, look at all that. So that's, look, it's still dripping, right? Yeah, it'll be dripping for a while. So it's another, how many, like another gallon, you think? Like another the, two? Another gallon, gallon and a half. Wow. Okay, so with all of that going on today, this is the last of it. Um, I did receive a box that Emily ordered for me. And it has cute ribbons jute ribbons it has little tiny golden uh, pouches which I think is adorable it has these little brass things it has little tiny honey stirs and last but not least oh another little pouch thing you hear that? Is that adorable or what? That is so cute. Thank you, Emily. So we're gonna put honey in here, and we're going to uh, we're gonna give these out uh, as gifts to some of our um, friends in the neighborhood, associates in the neighborhood that uh, could put, could. Uh, potentially buy from us so these are tiny little sample sizes adorable adorable little things um looking forward to that a very busy day let's get outside and see what the bees look like now that the honey of harvest is done and see if they're back to normal Okay, so bees are happy again. We are done, okay. right, with the harvest of honey. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah.
It was a long process, by the way, very long process, but it was uh, definitely worthwhile. Can't wait to have honey.